Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in the book of Isaiah, picking up in chapter 26, verse 15 this evening. We're going to see a great deal, especially even when we get to chapter 27, about the millennium, what happens after the tribulation, what happens when Jesus Christ returns. And how much have we seen about that in the book of Isaiah? What happens at that time that the Lord returns and afterwards? I mean, so much in this book of Isaiah. It's absolutely fascinating. Never forget in chapter 23 how it said, If your mind is stayed on the Lord, He will give you perfect peace. And like Jesus Christ would say in John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus Christ gives you peace that the world does not give. No matter what's going on, you know that you're going to be just fine because you serve the Lord, because you have Jesus Christ on your side. And we do have this, uh, this song in chapter 26. It's a beautiful thing. And the return of the Lord, how much uh, rewards and happiness, happiness is it to those who remain loyal to Jesus Christ? But lo woe to those who do not. So let's get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. So, all right, we pick it up in Isaiah chapter 26. Picking it up in verse 15, and it reads, Thou hast increased the nation, O Lord. Thou hast increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Thou hadst removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. And even today, like you know from Ezekiel 37 and many other chapters, that the twelve tribes of Israel are scattered. But you see, when Jesus Christ returns, those 12 tribes will be brought back to Jerusalem. But you see, not only will um, the tribes of Israel be gathered, but salvation is for whomsoever will. And like we'll see when we get to Isaiah 54, those curtains are stretched. And anyone who will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior receives eternal life. And that, so that nation is increased big time. Verse 16, Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. And that is uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. God corrects those that he loves. If one of his children is going down the wrong path, he's going to do what's necessary to get their attention, bring them back into the fold. But check out that word prayer in your Strong's Concordance. It's lakash in the Hebrew. And it's translated in other places as charmed, enchantment. So you might ask yourself, was their prayer here sincere or not? Because God knows the hearts and He knows if you truly repent, if you're truly trying to do what's right, or if you just want to do something that looks religious. You see, you can't trick God. So make sure your prayer is always sincere. And when you truly repent, your sins are washed away like they never even existed. Verse 7, and you might think of 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Verse 17, Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain, and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord, and, but think about it, like you would read, um, it, it's in the book of John, I believe. It says how when a woman is uh, travailing with child, she's in so much pain, but then when the child is born and she holds the child in her arms, it's like that pain didn't even happen. I mean, that much joy. So you see, when you're in the, the pangs like this, the travail, you have an expectation of incredible happiness. But you see, if you don't serve God, yeah, you're in that travail, all right? And this is in a spiritual, symbolic sense. You're in that travail, but then guess what? No good expectation comes because you're not serving God. What a miserable thing that would be. Verse 18, We have been with child. We have been in pain. 
we have, as it were, brought forth wind. I mean, it brought forth nothing worthwhile. All the pain you went through was for absolutely nothing. When there's going to be hard times in life no matter what. So why not be on God's side, serve Him, and know you have incredible rewards coming, that when you go through a hard time, use that to grow as a better servant of God, or you could just have it come to nothing and have no rewards, no eternal life, nothing. What a waste. Continuing verse 18. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. I mean, when was the last time you tried to tell someone about Jesus Christ? Share the gospel, the good news, the love of our Savior. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. We know the wicked ones are going to fall when the time comes. Make note of Psalms 37. But God does that so even hopefully they would turn to Him. So they would receive eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ, repenting of their sins. Verse 19, Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. There's life after death. And you know Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, that when your flesh body dies, the flesh returns to the dirt. And the Spirit returns to God who gave it. You see that with the uh, Lazarus and the rich man in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31. And many other places. Uh, what about Jesus Christ when He was on the cross and then the criminal next to Him, He realized that He was the Lord. And then the, the one next to Christ said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Christ said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Continuing in verse 19. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. There is life after death, and there's eternal life if you believe in Jesus Christ. And um, that the dead here, it was, so the, the verse starts with the dead and it ends with the dead, but it's two different Hebrew words. This one, how it ends, is that same word we had back in uh, chapter 26, verse 14. The Hebrew word is raphium. And as we mentioned in our last study, like in Deuteronomy chapter 2, when it mentions the giants, the Hebrew word is raphium. And the giants are the offspring of the fallen angels. And I'm just going to read verse 14 again. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 14. They are dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. That is the fate of the raphium. Verse 20. Back to verse 20 of Isaiah 26. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed when the vials of Revelation chapter 16 are poured out. You understand how fast that's going to go? Just a little moment. What, what are you going to be doing? Those who stood against the false Christ, allowed the Holy Spirit to speak through them, got the victory over them, or over Him and the, all the wicked ones. When the vials are about to be poured out, you know what you're doing? You're standing on the sea of glass, singing the song of Moses. You don't have anything to fear whatsoever. And you can see that in Revelation chapter 15, verses 2 and 3. Verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of His place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Time to make Himself known. Time to show everyone there is a God and exactly who the true God is. He comes out of His place for that. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. There's no unsolved mysteries. Some people might think they got away with murder, with a crime. Well, guess what? God knows. And that there is forgiveness of sins when you repent. But if someone just didn't repent of their sins, they don't even care, God's wrath is going to come down. You do not want to be in that situation. He comes out of His place. Are you on his side or not? Now we go into chapter 27. We're going to learn a great deal about Israel here. That's the 12 tribes. 
And um, this, a lot of it should remind you of Romans chapter 11, where you see there how um, Israel stumbled even so the Gentiles could come into salvation. Salvation is for whomsoever will. So, and you'll see that especially later, a little later in this chapter. It's not a long chapter, but let's go chapter 27, verse 1, and it reads, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Now, you don't need to, me to tell you who the dragon is who the serpent is. It's Satan himself. He's not literally a dragon or a serpent. There are different roles that he plays. And you know even in the tribulation, you have those roles. He's the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And in how in the sea here, Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 says, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, he's not actually a monster with seven heads and ten horns. Revelation chapter 17 will tell you that seven, uh, uh, seven heads are seven mountains and ten horns are ten kings. But Satan is that beast. He is Leviathan, the serpent, the dragon. He does have different roles. So when is in that day when the Lord returns? And it's not going to be good for Satan. Of course, he will be uh, locked in that pit for the thousand years of Revelation chapter 20. And uh, I wanted to mention also, Job chapter 41, you get a whole lot of wisdom about Leviathan there, which is Satan. And do not underestimate how incredible his deception will be. Verse 2, In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine, now, do you remember back in Isaiah chapter 5 how you had Israel as the vineyard and they were supposed to bring forth of, uh, uh, grapes, but instead they brought forth uh, uh, wild grapes, stinking berries, didn't produce fruit for God? What do we have here? We have this uh, vineyard of red wine. What's the wine symbolic of? The blood of Jesus Christ. So here, they're Christian. And nobody receives eternal life without believing in Jesus Christ. See, many of the 12 tribes of Israel are Christian today, but some are not. But all that's going to be set right when Jesus Christ returns. And there will be teaching in the millennium, of course. Verse 3, I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. That's the type of situation that you're in in the millennium when you've already overcome. When you already accepted Jesus Christ while you were in the flesh. So when Jesus Christ returns, you, uh, you have an immortal soul. Impossible to die. Eternal life forever. And you're guarded and protected every moment of, of all time. What a blessing. Verse 4. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? I would go through them. I would burn them together. I mean, it's so easy for God to destroy the wicked. And you see, the millennium is a time of bringing salvation. It's a time of teaching. God brings the wrath down right before the millennium begins. So everyone realizes that God is real, that He's not going to put up with evil. But then that, that's what the millennium is about, teaching, bringing people to the love of Jesus Christ, bringing people to salvation. Verse 5, Or let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. That's what God wants. He gives everyone every last opportunity all the way to the end of the millennium to accept Him to live forever, to come into the perfect peace that comes through serving Jesus Christ. Verse 6, He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Jacob means all twelve tribes of Israel. Israel shall bloom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. They will produce fruit. They will bring others to Jesus Christ. They will serve Him. 
And what is the 12 tribes of Israel? It's a seed line, of course. Unfortunately, many of those 12 tribes do not even realize who they are. And, but make note of, I mentioned Romans chapter 11, how it says, All Israel shall be saved. What does that mean? Oh, just no matter what, they don't even have to accept Christ. No, of course that's not what it means. No one can be saved unless they believe in the Savior Jesus Christ. And many things will be set right in the millennium. Everyone will see Jesus Christ. And those of, of, of Israel that have not accepted Him will turn to Jesus Christ. Verse 7. Hath he smitten him as he smote those that smote him? This is saying, is, did God bring his wrath down on Israel just as much as he did on the enemies that went against Israel? The answer is no. God is very merciful. Or is he slain? Meaning, is Israel slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by them? And the answer is no. God is very merciful to Israel and again, that's a people. That's a seed line. And, but anyway, um, just like you would see in Exodus chapter 19, God calls Israel His peculiar people. That means they are a treasure to Him. But make no mistake, just like Christ would say in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, Christ said, if you're not with me, you're against me. So anyone who denies Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter if they are of Israel or not. If they deny Christ, they are against Him and He is against them. Verse, uh, verse 8. In measure, when it shooteth forth, thou will debate with it. This means when God brought wrath, His correction down on Israel, He, did it, he didn't just bring the wrath down as much as they deserve. No, he was merciful. He did it with measure. He was very careful to do it the right amount. That is always perfect according to his perfect righteousness. He stayeth his roughed wind in the day of the east wind. He was much more merciful than we could ever deserve. And this will remind you also of Psalms chapter 103, verses 10 through 12. I definitely recommend reading those verses. Very comforting. And you see, the, the day of, the, of an east wind, that rough east wind, that could just wipe out the fruit of an actual vineyard. God is merciful. Verse 9, By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. Jacob, once again, that's the twelve tribes of Israel. Remember Genesis chapter 32, Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord, and his name was changed to Israel. So when you read about Jacob many times in God's Word, it's talking about all 12 tribes of Israel. But the, the iniquity shall be purged. And this is all the fruit to take away his sin. God corrects those that he loves. He brought the wrath down to bring them to repentance. When he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten in sunder, the groves and images shall not stand up. All that false religion, idolatry, done away with, destroyed when Jesus Christ returns at the second advent. Praise God for it. Verse 10. Yet the defense city shall be desolate, and the habitation forsaken, and left like a wilderness. There shall the calf feed, and there shall he lie down, and consume the branches thereof. That's the fate of a place that denies Jesus Christ, that worships false gods. Verse 11. When the boughs thereof, thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. You remember John chapter 15. Jesus Christ is the vine, and the branches that don't produce fruit, they're going to be cut off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. The thousand years Satan's locked in the pit, everyone will be taught. But Satan's released at the end of the thousand years for one final test to the people that are being taught. 
Um, and then those who choose to follow Satan at that end of the thousand years, they will be cast into the lake of fire. They will die the second death and their soul will perish. You cannot live forever unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's the only way. Verse 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. That, that word beat, you'll see that Hebrew word the other time that's used. It's like when you uh, beat the olive branch or the olive tree to get the olives. So th that's what this is saying is that God is careful to do everything He can to give every last person the opportunity to receive eternal life. Like it says, gathered one by one. God gives every individual that chance and every, it's up to themselves. No one can be saved for another person. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit and you have that eternal life abiding in you. But that is the only way. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. God gives every last opportunity to every last person. You understand that's how merciful God is. That's why it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, See how a lot of people, uh, this is me paraphrasing, but this is what it means, that a lot of people are saying, oh, why is the Lord taking so long, you know? But no, it says He's very patient. He's not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. He gives everyone every last opportunity, but those who follow Satan at the end of the thousand years, they will die the second death, and good riddance. Only truly evil people are going to do that. Then we can go to the perfect eternity of Revelation 21 and 22. Perfect happiness forever. Verse 13 to complete. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. Some people, they feel like their life's just about ready to be destroyed. No, turn to Jesus Christ. He's with you. He'll give you exactly what you need right when you need it. That includes the second advent when the seventh trumpet sounds and it's time for Jesus Christ to return. And the outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. That's where the kingdom will be as we just talked about in the Q&A last night. Kingdom's going to be here on earth. Mount Zion, Jerusalem is where the, the throne of God will be forever and ever. And we already mentioned Ezekiel 37. The 12 tribes are scattered. But then when Jesus Christ returns, those 12 tribes will be brought to Jerusalem. You can even read in Ezekiel uh, chapter 48, I believe it is, you even have the allotment of land of the 12 tribes of Israel in the millennium. But, um, but remember, salvation, is it only for the 12 tribes of Israel? Of course not. Remember Romans chapter 11, it fits together with this chapter like a glove. Salvation is for whomsoever will accept Jesus Christ, receive peace and happiness and comfort that's impossible any other way, and receive eternal life, which is impossible any other way as well. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for this place you've given us. We can teach your word. We just ask you to continue to give us understanding, not just for ourselves, but so we can share them with others. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name, amen. Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.